this question they're asking us for two different things let's go ahead and get the inverse first we'll do it in the order of the question asked and then after we get the inverse function then we'll worry about the domain of that inverse function all right so start out writing down just rewriting and let's write down how we get inverses so inverse of y equals f of x, there's two steps. Swap x with y. So what that's gonna give us is x equals f of y. Second step, solve for y. And that's gonna take a couple of algebra steps. Uh, I think maybe exactly two, no, three algebra steps in this problem, maybe four. Once you solve for y, you're going to have y equals a bunch of stuff on the other side. That stuff will be the inverse function of x. All right, so let's go ahead and get started here. There is no y. That's okay because f of x is equal to y. So we got a y equals square root 9 minus x plus 6. We're ready for step 1. Swap x with y. So I only see x once and y once, so this is a pretty easy swap. Just be careful if x appears two or three times, you have to swap all the x's for y's, all the y's for x's. Most of the time, there's only going to be one of each. OK. Now that we're done step one. Step one is relatively easy. Step two, we got to solve now. And if you're wondering solve for what, well, if we're solving for x, we'd be done. So not x, we're solving for y. All right, let's remember PEMDAS. And when in doubt, you're doing algebra, you wanna go up the PEMDAS ladder. Let's get rid of the plus six, we'll subtract six. All right, next. We're going to get rid of this square root right here. How do we get rid of the square root? We're going to square both sides. So on the right side, you just cancel the square root. Now on the left side, you have to square the entire left side. You don't get to square one and then the other term. So you have the whole thing x minus 6 squared like that. You don't need to foil this out unless you really want to. I don't necessarily recommend it. So now y's got two friends left, we'll get rid of the nine friend. So we're gonna subtract nine. And we're almost done. We're gonna multiply by negative one now to get rid of this last negative sign here. It's gonna flip both signs right here. Okay, so that's our function and you can give it the proper name, f inverse of x. All right, so that's the first part. We're done with this function, the inverse function. Let's go and see what they want next. They're asking us domain of the inverse. So we'll write that down here. So domain of f inverse, that's what they're asking for. If we think about the way functions work with their domain and the range, so I need a little more room here. Domain f range of f. Your functions go from the domain of f to the range of f. The inverse function goes the opposite direction. And so if you ask the inverse function, hey, what is all this stuff over here? The inverse function would say, oh, that's my domain. So you could also call this domain of f inverse that's equal to the range of f. Basically a function and its inverse swap domain and range because they go backwards with respect to each other. And if you ask f inverse, hey, what's over here? f inverse will tell you, oh, that's my range. So they're asking in the question, what is the domain of f inverse? 
you can see it right here. That's the domain of F inverse. It's also known as the range of F. So let's go ahead and find the range of F. So I'll rewrite our F function here. It's going to be square root 9 minus X. Plus 6. I'm going to graph this with transformations like we did back in chapter 1. And if we're going to graph it like that, we would write minus x plus 9 plus 6. There's going to be three transformations. Uh, I will factor the negative one out. And from here, I, the actual horizontal transformations are not important because I really want to know about the outputs, the y values of this function. But just for completeness, we'll look at the horizontal transformations. So we got our base, y equals square root x, easy to graph, 0, 0. I'm just going to graph 1, 1 because right now we should know what the square root function looks like. There's going to be three transformations. We'll do our horizontal. We always go stretch before shift. So this will be square root negative 1 times x. So horizontal transformation of negative 1. It will reflect across the y-axis. Right here. And next up will be our horizontal shift. Now remember horizontal shifts and stretches, but shifts will go backwards of what they look like. So here minus nine actually means shift to the right nine. So we're going way over to nine and then over to eight and up one. So there's our square root graph. Last transformation is that plus six there. And there's a vertical uh, shift up six. So we got nine and eight still. So there's gonna be six, and the other y value we need is seven. And then the square root will look like that. And we're finally ready to answer the question, what's the range? Range of f. These are all the y values that you see. So it's going to start at 6 and go to infinity. So that's the range of f right there.